folks. Welcome to Monday night's tutorial. Um, we're going to make the uh, car mat today. Um, it's a cracking idea. If you've got a couple of kids and you want to put something in your handbag to, you know, so they're not on their iPhone or not your iPhone or if you want to nip to the doctors or somewhere and you want to just put something down. Hi Dawn, hi Sandra. Um, this is a really good idea. So um, it's a very quick one tonight, probably only, oh, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, something like that. Um, only three pieces to the kit and then you've got your ribbon as well. So four components overall. Um, if you do come on, just pop on, when you pop on, say hello and I can see who's here. And again, if you're watching it in the rerun, um, say hello. Now you can see just over my shoulder there, hi Erica. Um, I'm working on something for next week, um, which is, it's a lovely little thing. So I'm not going to say anything about it. I'm not going to give anything away. Um, it might be about an hour though. It's quite long to do, but it is worth it. So um, anyway, if I put the camera down and then we can see, there we go. Okay, so basically um, the whole, idea of this is all based around the fabric really it's a great little um little fabric um these cars i picked these up in the i think it was the pound shop actually and i think i got six or eight for a pound i mean how sturdy or strong they are but ideal for this and um, but you can actually make the garage bit um hi dawn you can make uh, the garage of the garage bit you know the size of your car so if you've got bigger trucks you can make them for that size but you know this is going to keep any child um busy for a couple you know for 20 minutes or so if you just need a quick uh, few minutes to yourself so if i put that to one side just over there okay um i am going to do a kit for these um i'll just pre-cut it all Again, I find that um, when somebody wants to make something, hi Audrey, um, if you want to make something, sometimes I think when, especially with beginners, it's the cutting out that puts you off. So um, what I'm going to try and do is do as many kits as I can pre-cut. So all you've got to do is, instead of having instructions as well that you read, which again, Sometimes I find, um, even myself who I'm really used to patterns and things, when I actually read them, I'm a visual person. So if somebody shows me what to do, I can easily do it. So I'm finding that that's the way to go. So you've got your tutorial and then hopefully I'll um, be able to do any any kits. It won't be every single tutorial, but um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll do it that way. So um, you've got a long red piece in your kit and then you've got the, mm -hmm. um, the printed car and then a smaller red piece so i'm just going to move the long red piece out of the way for now now it doesn't matter when you do this whether you sew the red piece to this side or that side because it doesn't matter which end it is so don't worry about that at all so all you do is i'm going to just pin this so you pin the two long sides together now if if it's over slightly see like that's over there don't worry we just need we can trim that off later and we're just going to go half inch seam down there so i'm just going to attach this to that side there okay back tack there and back tack at the bottom as well now i've got red cotton on here um if we do any top stitching i may change it or i may even stick to the red because there is red in the the actual print as well and sometimes when you do a contrasting color i quite like that um i'm going to put it on a a, quite a fairly big stitch about a three and a half um, and then I'm going to back tap and then straight down to the bottom the um the thing I'm doing next week I will give a little bit away it is also another play mat um, and I'm just trying to put in as many components as I can and trying to work out an easier way to do it so it's going to be easy for beginners to do okay so that's that first bit there so my iron's on i'm just going to bring the towel over and what i want to do the best way to press this is back on itself because then when you turn this over it creates a nice crease there so 
I would, when you press it now, yeah, have it packed back on itself. You can do it that way, but as long as you don't open it, don't open the seam. So either that way or that way, whichever way your um, your fabric is kind of wanting to go. But I'm gonna I'm gonna take it this way. So just press it down, and then I'm gonna turn it over and do it again from the other side. So I know it's a nice crisp edge because we're turning that over. Later on, I want to make sure that that is nice and flat. Okay, and while I've got the iron out, if you go to the other end, hi Irene, about a half inch seam, just press the top. This makes it easier when we're turning through later on and we're actually doing a bit of top stitching to get the, um, the ribbon in. So rather than you struggling with it. And then on the red piece, now it doesn't matter, Either, either side, again, just fold it in and about a half inch seam. So it's not, this one's not an exact science. If you get it out slightly, it doesn't matter because as long as you catch all your seams in, you're totally fine. Right, I'll just move that out of the way. We'll still need the iron in a bit because I want to press this when it's all nice and uh, when it's finished. Now, I am going to, I'm going to cut the, um, this piece slightly longer for you so you can trim it off because you better have slightly too much of that because you're turning that through. You don't want that too, if this was, if you got that a bit short and you turned that over, you wouldn't have much room for your cars. So if you lay that down now, I'm just on the top there. Let's turn it over this way. I think I'll get it there. Okay. So just go to your top where you've done your crease and just open that up and just pop a pin there to, so it stays open. And then you can pin it all the way around as much as you want. Just make sure it's nice and flat and it's sitting well. Because if you just go over slightly, because you're taking two seams there, if you do slightly more than a half inch seam, you'll just make it slightly smaller. So I'm going to actually, where this is now, before I sew that, I'm going to trim that down ever so slightly, just so I know I'm going to get both seams in when I sew. Because if I do that with the green underneath, you might not catch it in. So when you've got one side right, just make sure you look at the other side and if you're happy with it, then that's fine. If not, just trim it off. And again, just a couple of pins all the way around. And then on the top, there, before I put my pin in, I don't know whether you can see that. You see where the white chalk is? That is the end. Yeah, it is. Oh, thanks, Erica. I think, I think, um, hi, Amanda. I think when it comes to visual, um, I, f I find the way they describe patterns, I mean, I've been doing this for 36 years, 37 years, and I, I'm, a, I'm a seamstress, but even I look at the pattern and I think, why have they explained it like that? It's just going to confuse people. So I think if you just visually see something, it makes it so much easier. So, and if it's cut out as well, then that's perfect as well. Get rid of, rid of those. Just going to pin that. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew round it. It's very, This is very similar to what we've done before when we've done the pouches and things like that. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like, um, it's like, it's similar to what we've done before and it's the bagging out where you put two pieces of fabric together, right sides together. Now with the red, it doesn't really matter whether that's right or wrong side, but if that had a print on it, um, or you were backing it with the same, then you would definitely put right sides together and you sandwich it together, sew round it and then turn it through and that's called bagging out. Okay, so all we're gonna do is the, the, um, the bit that has we've just pressed, that's the open end. So I'm gonna sew in a U shape all the way around, back tack here, all the way down to the bottom, make sure that your needle is down in the down position, lift your foot up and then foot down, turn it and then foot down and then sew along the bottom and then up the top. So just in a U shape really. And again, half inch seam. Now, I know I was saying half inch seam the other night when I did another tutorial. Um, what were we doing? 
Oh, it was the cup holder and it was a quarter inch seam. So, but this is definitely half inch seam. So just back tack it and all the way down. So as you're coming down to the pins, don't, I mean, if you sew over your pin, if you have your pin this way into your fabric, so, so let me just show you this. Try and pin um, horizontal, because if you do go over that and forget your pins there, your needle in your machine is more likely to go on either side. But if you pin it this way, which a lot of people do, because it's just natu a natural feeling, then you're more likely to catch that and break your needle. So try and get into the habit of pinning that way. So if you do forget that it's in there, um, there's a good chance you won't break a needle. And needles are quite expensive and there's nothing worse than if you've got a, uh, a project on the go and uh, you've broken a needle and you've got to wait until one's delivered. Okay, right down to the bottom, about half an inch from the edge. My needle's down, my foot's up, I'm going to turn it 45 degrees, uh, foot back down, the presser foot, and then I'm going to carry on sewing. Now that'll give you a nice sharp corner because your needle's in the down position. A lot of machines nowadays, the needle is always in the down position, but if you've got an old machine, sometimes it'll, um, it'll be up, so make sure you turn that needle down before you move on. just going to check underneath that I've yeah so I don't know whether you can see that yeah you can so both but this seam here that I pressed before is the both go in the same way so it doesn't matter which way you do it but just make sure that on one side it's not going down and one side it's going up because it'll be really twisted and it'll just make it all bulky later out and right up to the end and then a back tap and that is it for that for now okay I'm just going to go in and I'm going to box out my corners because again I want a nice corner and a nice finish on this because I'm going to tack that down so again my thumbs in there this finger is going to turn it that finger's going to turn that there and my thumb's right in the corner and then you're pinching it like this just turn it through and then there's no need to poke that out then just give it a bit of a wiggle just like make sure everything's sat in nicely and the same on the other side just turn it right on the corner and then through again and then pull it all the way out That's basically most of it done now. But what I'm going to do is, while it's in this position, I'm just going to give it a little press. I think if you press as you go, it's definitely the best thing to do. Makes it look more professional for a start, and it makes the job easier. So as you're working on something, roll your seam. So the reason that you roll your seam is, if you just press that now, there's a good chance that that will be stuck in and then see the way that is in a, a nice sharp edge roll your seams and get your the actual seam right to the edge as best as you can now a bit of water on your fingers will help grip that edge and then just quick press and then round this side Now, I suppose I could have gone with any colour, but I quite like the red. Um, I think it really picks up the green because you've got yellow, you've got blue in there. Um, but the red, it just kind of, I don't know, racing car red, it made me think. I just thought it was the nicest colour. Now, I'm just going to repress the end bit again. Just while I've got the iron out. Just put, make sure that's all tucked in. And then I'm just going to press that like that and again while I've got the iron out I'm just going to turn this in now I want to turn it on that seam there so I should turn it in just give it a hand press first of all and then press it down okay, so what's my pins I'm just going to pin that down 
so it doesn't go anywhere. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the um, the ribbon in now. Um, I'm going to put a red one in this, I think. Just shape the end that just it just looks nice when you shape the end. So you will get a long piece of ribbon, just fold it in half. And then about the center, just pop it in about half an inch to three quarters of an inch inside. You probably can't see that because of the uh, because of the color. If I turn it upside down, and do it this way, you should be able to see it. So just see that where it goes in. Just pop a pin in it there. I'm just going to turn it back that way now and then I'm going to pop another pin in both the front and the back so I know it's not moving anywhere. Take that first one out and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch right across here and just close that opening up. Now make sure that you catch underneath as well so as close to the edge as you can just so it's quite neat um, but just back tack there and back tack there and then when you come to the ribbon part back tack over the ribbon as well I mean there's no uh, there's no real strength um, it's not a structured bag or anything but just you know what kids are like they tend to pull things so just make sure that that is um, not going to go anywhere so I'm just going to go over now I'm going to do this in the red because I think that's and then I'm going to actually sew right up to my ribbon so I know it's not going to move. So I don't know whether you can actually see, I'm just about a stitch in on the ribbon. I'm going to do one more. I'm nowhere near the pin and then I'm going to take the pin out so I know that ribbon's not going to move. And then just a quick back tap over it and then back to the other side. Now it's not necessarily a boy thing this. I know lots of girls who like cars. Um... So, and I think it, with the red as well, it's quite, um, it's not gender specific. So, um, whereas if you went for blue, if you wanted blue for a boy, you could do, I guess. But all the packs I'm doing are, are going to be in the red. So I'm just going to check. I've caught all of that in. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew along these two edges here to close this in and make that a flap. So back tack here and then back tack there and the same there and there. Um, now it will be quite thick so I would start instead of starting on the edge I'd start slightly further in then back tack come down and back tack to, to it and then come down and um, sometimes when you're trying to sew and back tack on the edge like this it will fight with the machine so if you kind of once you're sewing and you can board it and then back it seems to work easier so if you find that anything's quite thick like that and your machine is struggling give that a go so as I say I'm just going to pull it further down so I'm going to go about half a centimetre down and then I'm going to do two or three stitches and then back tack it right up to the to the, um, the start bit yeah so it is quite thick but it's going through okay and then back tack that side So as you can see, I've come, I started here, went down, but I've come back up, so I've caught that. But you do need, because there's going to be cars in there and kids are going to be pulling in and out, in and out, you definitely need um, a back tap there. Now this side won't be so bad because we're coming from this corner. Although there's a lot of bulk there, it won't be as bad as the other one. So I'm going to do that again now. I'm going to come a little bit further down. machines running it's like you, you know yourself when you if you try if you're running uphill and you start at the bottom of the hill and then you run uphill it's quite hard but if you're running and then you come to a hill you kind of got a bit of inertia so you, it's okay then you just carry on so I'm gonna take them pins out okay so um I think what I might do is I'm just gonna get my cars and this is probably the best thing for you to do as well um, you can have as many pockets as you want, um, but bear in mind you want them to be snug enough so the car fits in them um, and it doesn't move around too much. So a couple of pins is probably a good idea. I think what I'll do, 
interesting because I've got six in this one. Two, four, six, yeah. So if I just measure and find my central point. So again, don't measure from the end. Measure from your stitch mark that you've made. Now that is just under 12. So if I find my central point at six. And then I should be able to do, two, um, yeah, two inches. Now that should be more than enough for that little car to go in. But if your cars are bigger than mine, um, maybe get just put five in. So again, I'm just going to pin where... I want that stitch line to go. Now, if you want to use Taylor's chalk, you can do. Um, but if the more you get used to pins, the better. Instead of all the faffing about putting tape, you know, putting markings on and then worrying that they're not going to go when you when you press them out. Now, when I said before about the pins, see the way I've pinned that. Now, if I put that under the machine, I'm going to have to sew along there. So what I'm going to do is. When I measured that, I knew when I put the pin in, I put that pin in on the, the when I put the pin in, not out, there's two, there's two, um, the pin's gone in there and it's come out there. But where I put the pin in, I know that's exactly two inches. So I'm going to get another pin and I'm going to put that in where that pin is. And I'm going to take that out and then I'm going to pin it that way. Now you must remember when you're sewing it, it's where you put the pin in, not coming out. So hopefully I've explained that well. So again, with that one, take that pin out and pin sideways. Same again, just where I've gone in. Take that pin out. My poor table's getting scratched here. Um, pin it in. And then the last one, pin in where I've put the other pin in, take that one out, put it in the pin cushion. So when you're looking at that, you'll think, well, where's my markers now? Just remember, it's where the pin actually entered the fabric. So it's that bit there, that bit there. So once you start taking the pins out and it won't look so bad, so you start on left or the right, whichever way. If you're left-handed, you're right-handed, you might, you might want to sew... Um, differently thanks Maggie hopefully um hope I mean it's tips like this that I do every day and I'm thinking that's actually quite a useful thing to say because I think especially if you want to make this and let, let your child play with it you don't want to be pressing it to get the marks out or worrying that the chalks you know trying to rub the chalk out you know you can use your pins as visual so all I know now is I'm going to back tack here and then sew towards that beginning bit there and because it's only a short you can pretty much get that straight. But, you know, it's probably a four-year-old playing with this. So if it's not straight, is he going to critique you? Or is she going to critique you? Possibly not. So, again, it's good practice with your um, straight lines. And also, I'm looking now, making sure that my needle is in line with where that pin's going in. And, again, it's good practice. So I'm going to take that pin out now because I know I'm in. And then I'm just going to back tack sew down to the bottom and then back tack and that's my first one done so I'm just going to give that a quick look and it looks pretty straight to me it's not bad at all I'm going to put the next one under and then I'm going to find where I went in with the pin and you know if you're out you're only going to be a millimetre or so out um, and as I say, it's great practice this for straight lines because it's only a short run. Sometimes a lot of people say to me, well, you know, my lines are not very straight. Sometimes it's because you're sewing too slowly, believe it or not. It's like a it's like riding a bicycle. The faster you go, you will um you you'll keep yourself upright. So kind of just think about that really. These little projects are great for when you are practicing straight lines and going around corners and all that kind of thing. It does help. So I've got one more to do after this. I mean, if you're feeling brave, you can actually do this in a contrasting cotton. Because um, you're doing it in red, it's not going to be seen on the red. 
but if you are feeling brave then just kind of do it in in the blue or something I'm just going to take that down to there and that is it okay I'm just going to tidy that up I mean how simple was that and now you've got something that is you know if you go to the doctors and I, th I know a lot of doctors used to have toys for kids but I'm not sure now with the situation um, you could get this out on a bus, on a train, anywhere. It's small enough to sit on your lap. Um, get my cards now. The great thing about this is, as well, is it's washable. Now, another thing as well, if you say you say you went for argument's sake to McDonald's or somewhere like that, you could put this on top of the table as a table mat to eat off. So it's a cracking little little um, little idea, and then you just roll it up. And it doesn't matter, this one's slightly longer than the other one. Um, but if it kind of does this halfway, then just fold it over. So don't worry about, if you if your seams come out slightly bigger or smaller than mine, it won't fit exactly like that. But again, don't worry, because no four-year-old's going to complain when you give, give them this. And then just tighten a bow. And then that is small enough to go in a car or a handbag. And that is it cracking little thing so let me pull the camera back up I want to play with it myself actually <laughs> hello okay so um I'm having my jab this week uh, my covid vaccination um and I believe I've, I've spoken to a few people a lot of people have been fine with it but a, a few people have said they've not been very well with it so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try something I'm going to um probably do a quick video for Thursday rather than do a live because if I'm feeling a bit rough it's probably not something I want to do um you, yeah you can Tony um if um the, the way to do it let me just bring this down so Tony's just asked can she make it bigger for the um for the holder for trains so basically what you do is when this is over instead of just bringing it to where the seam is bring it further up so because on the back is all red and then on the inside that's on the fold there and the green finishes there but it won't matter if that comes up a couple of inches so so yeah so that that's fine so that will sit a bit further up a couple of inches and then if you need to do them wider do them wider this it, it's you know it's as i say it's not an exact science this you can make that slightly longer just this will finish up slightly smaller but it won't matter um, and then just make your channels as as, an, as you want okay um so yeah so hopefully i'll be fine with my jab but i thought if i do a video and then um it's only going to be a very quick one um in fact i think i might do a luggage tag um for when we're hopefully going to be back on um holidays and things um and if i put that on as a video on thursday um it'll be fine if not uh, if I feel fine, I might jump on and do it. So either way, um, but I was thinking when I get back to opening up at the studio, I might do one live tutorial a week and then a video a week as well. So it's just playing with some ideas. Um, but yeah, so look out for next week's. Um, as I say, it's another play mat. I'm trying to do it so it's a kit form. There's quite a few components in it and there's even a zip in it. So if you want to know how to put a zip in it, that's um, it's an easy way. It's a zip with a pocket, actually. So I'm not going to say too much. Um, just giving too much away. So, um, yeah, a couple of play mats. Great for getting out and about again now. Um, and that's about it, really. So I hope you enjoyed that one. Fairly quick one tonight. You didn't mind you. It's been half an hour. That's me, grab Gavin. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, if you want, um, if you do want one of these, I am going to do them as a pack. Um, so you'll get the um, the red fabric, you'll get the green um, uh, road fabric and the ribbon. I'll cut it for you as well and that'll be £4.99. Um, if you want them posted, just put another £2 on postage and I'll get them out to you. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's taken less than, even with all the talking, it's taken less than half an hour. So, uh, so yeah, that's fab. All right then, so I shall see you, I'll see you soon. If I do put a video on on Thursday, have a lovely Easter and um, I'll get back to something next week. I've had another delivery actually in today, um, which I'll be sorting out tonight. 
Um, I've had some jersey in, uh, some really cool uh, glow in the dark jersey. So I'm going to try and do a tutorial of, with that at some point. But I, again, I want it to be easy for you. So I'll work something out. Okay, so lovely. See you soon. Bye.